General George Armstrong Custer needs no introduction. Whether you're a historian or not, you have heard of Custer's last stand, the decisive 1876 defeat of Custer and his men by a coalition of Native American forces that shocked the country. It has become one of the defining American moments, so much so that Budweiser even deemed it sensible to use a depiction of it in their advertising, a copy of which resides in the Smithsonian, by the way. Needless to say, Custer's deeds brought him fame during his life, and his failure brought him immortality, ironically, after his death. Today, guns and artifacts of Custer and his historic defeat are absolutely museum-worthy objects in every sense of the word. Uh, they're prized objects, and they're as eagerly sought by collectors as they are institutions. Now, the top, arguably, of these prized objects are the Lot 5 Colts, which comprised most of the single-action army revolvers that the 7th Cavalry carried that day into the Battle of Little Bighorn. They bring significant sums at auction. Rock Island Auction Company has had the privilege to offer two recently, uh, one example in 2023, so just last year, for about $294,000, and another just the year before for $764,000. Museum-worthy items indeed. But we're going to cover the lotted Colts in another video for this auction, so subscribe now. You won't want to miss it. And today, we're going to talk about a completely different revolver of George Armstrong Custer, one that remained in the Custer family until 1956. And it's this. This is a Calderwood and Sons double action pin fire revolver with some ammunition with a presentation case inscribed to GAC George Armstrong Custer. This gun is described by Custer's longtime orderly, Sergeant John Ryan. Uh, Ryan fought bitterly and survived the Battle of Little Bighorn because thankfully that day he was serving under Reno's battalion. Uh, of course, in later years, you know, he's going on to write at length about not only his experience in the battle, which should absolutely be read, but also uh, he writes about his time with Custer and he describes the two pistols that Custer carried quote, one a 45 caliber Colt and the other a French Navy. Now, Custer's orderly, Sergeant Ryan, was no doubt thinking of the more familiar Le Faucheux Model 1858 Navy. Now, he's more familiar with those because 10,000 had been ordered by the Union for use during the Civil War, so it may have been a model he had some familiarity with. But Calderwood and Son were gunmakers from Dublin, Ireland, However, the similarities between the two pinfire guns are many. Like the distinct shape and profiles of their hammers are nearly identical. And this very distinct and separated uh, ejector rod, those are quite noticeable. But it's not just Custer's orderly who places the gun in the possession of George Armstrong Custer. Like we mentioned earlier, it comes right out of the Custer family. Now, to paint that picture for you, back in 1871, George and Libby Custer bought a 110-acre farm in Monroe, Michigan, and they did that with George's brother, Nevin, and his wife, Anne. Now, when Libby's father died, she went to live with her mother at the family homestead, leaving that farmhouse and its 110-acre to Custer's brother, Nevin, and his wife. Nevin would farm this, uh, this land the rest of his life. Fast forward now many years. And this revolver is found by the family in the attic of that Custer house on North Custer Avenue where George and Nevin had lived together with their wives. I wasn't able to find the year the pistol was discovered in that attic, but it came into the possession 
of Nevin's grandson, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Custer, essentially the grand nephew of George Armstrong Custer. Now, Lieutenant Colonel Custer also had a variety of other family artifacts in his possession, some medals of honor and such. And it wasn't until 1956 that Lieutenant Colonel Custer sold this revolver with its ammunition and its presentation case to a lifelong student of George Armstrong Custer by the name of Mr. Lawrence Frost. Now, Frost was an author, penning several books on Custer and his life and surrounding details. He's a historian, as you can imagine. He's a curator of the Custer Room at the Monroe County Museum and later even served as the mayor of Custer's boyhood town. The revolver simply couldn't have gone to a more enthusiastic collector. And now, this revolver is ready for its next worthy steward. A revolver recalled by Custer's own orderly in its inscribed presentation case, documented directly out of the Custer family as relatively recently as 1956 after being discovered in a Custer family home and was at one point part of an astute Custer collection, that of Mr. Frost. It is the double action pin fire revolver of George Armstrong Custer. It's available this May at Rock Island Auction Company during our May Premier Firearms Auction. Come hold it in your hand. We invite you to come to our new facility that we're filming in today in Bedford, Texas. Come hold the Custer firearm in your own hand. Tell us you don't feel the history Better yet, come the day before, May 16th, for a full day of preview. It's open to the public. We can't wait to see you in Bedford. Until next time, keep your powder dry.